Hey everyone, welcome back. It appears that Israel is not indeed waiting until after Passover to strike back against Iran. There are currently reports of explosions in areas of uh, cities within Iran, especially where Iran has nuclear research facilities, also parts of Syria. We're going to go through this in detail here. Uh, one of the areas is Isfahan. Uh, there is a uh, specific uh, nuclear technology center there. Uh, it appears there's a possibility some strikes have occurred at this facility. Uh, we're not clear if it's just in this city or specifically at uh, this facility, but we do have this nuclear facility and research plant. Uh, it's about 295 kilometers away from Tehran, uh, obviously capital here. And uh, these strikes are leading markets down. At the moment, we've got Bitcoin under 62,000. We've got the Nikkei index in uh, Japan that is down. Last I checked, 2.25. Yeah, 2.26% right now. We have uh, futures also dropping with oil. Oil up. Presently, we've got gold at 2404, oil up 1.7% on this news. 10-year uh, Treasury yields down uh, seven basis points. This is actually quite substantial. Uh, we have uh, Asian markets, again, the Nikkei down uh, 226. Uh, we've got uh, Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ futures all down more than three-fourths of 1%. Uh, some of the news uh, that uh, we're just uh, searching for and trying to get a little bit of a better understanding of exactly what's going on uh, is it looks like uh, there are no notices about closed airspace in the area. Uh, there are some unconfirmed reports that maybe airspace was going to get closed. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. We're not really seeing uh, any uh, actual indications that airspace has been closed, but there is uh, some footage of what... This is not the best footage. Let's go give this a little play here. It's a little loud. You'll see something in like five or ten seconds. It sounded like a plane flying by. go. Yeah, it's uh, not really getting a lot of footage out of there. It's, it's more like noise at the moment. So seeing some, I mean, that's that's in southern Syria, mind you. So it, Syria is one of the uh, Iranian allies. It's actually your only local ally is Syria in the region. Uh, it looks like uh, explosions so far have been reported all within the last about 30 minutes here near the cities of Esfahan and Natanz. Both of those are in central Iran, and both of them contain uh, significant facilities uh, for Iranian nuclear programs. Now, what's really important about this is uh, Iran has promised to retaliate against any form of uh, retaliation from Israel, including potentially the use of weapons that Iran has never used before. Now, uh, many jokes have been made about that, but now's not the time for joking because this is this is potentially very serious. Uh, now, we, we don't, ex it looks like these attacks, again, we weren't expecting attacks until uh, at least the end of Passover. That was really good, like, clickbait, basically, from Israel to catch everybody off guard. There are also now potentially so, uh, Iraqi sources claiming that airstrikes uh, on uh, Baghdad have taken place, specifically where a high-ranking meeting was taking place, apparently involving several Iranian-backed groups and members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Uh, we're not clearly... A lot of these are unconfirmed reports right now, but again, uh, potentially two central cities in Iran as well as uh, multiple reports of fighter jets, as we saw in that video, or heard in that video more so, uh, in southern Syria. So you've got potentially uh, Baghdad strikes, southern Syria, and uh, it looks like potentially central Iran. Uh, we are uh, obviously waiting for more updates on what's going on here, but clearly uh, the uh, futures market is pricing in the uncertainty. Uh, as we can see, Bitcoin here bobbing around that 62 level, just bottoming out. You've got Ethereum bottoming out at about 3,000 right here. Uh, again, huge explosions being heard. I'm trying to see if we could find any uh, imagery or video out of this. Yeah, it looks like we've got... 
Uh, here's one account. We're going to take a peek at this, and let's see what we find here. Uh, explosions so far have been reported in the last few minutes, and looks like we've got a very short video clip. Not sure if we can get anything out of this. Yeah, you, you, you can see smoke billowing here, uh, and what appears to be some uh, fire or, or something in the distance. Very, not, not a lot of good coverage on this just yet. Obviously, uh, there's there's talk here about Iranian sources are reporting that no anti-aircraft fire or air raid sirens have been heard in the cities. Just about three or four explosions. Obviously, it's possible that these explosions were planted explosions uh, or, or explosions uh, delivered in a different way. However, there is uh, a report of uh, relatively intense warplane activity across parts of Iraq. Uh, and uh, that's potentially because uh, fighter jets have maybe crossed across, uh, cross over, crossed over, excuse me, to uh, Baghdad to conduct strikes. At the same time as these explosions have now been heard uh, in uh, central Iran, at least three of those in Iran, and again, potentially targeting those uh, uh, nuclear facilities uh, in Iran. Uh, it does not look like we really have any mainstream coverage on this at the moment. You do see, let's see if we hear really any. At the mercy of what that stronger dollar is doing here this morning. And you're seeing some of these small caps actually fall. No, I don't see any real coverage here at the moment on uh, some details here. Just that we have multiple cities reporting these, some, some videos circulating. Lookups, for example, tele um, telegram videos. Sometimes these there are reposted videos from other conflicts, so it's very difficult to verify the authenticity at, immediately at the time of sort of these sort of coverages. Uh, we could see some form of flash up there in the sky. Not not exactly much to see there. Uh, trying to see. Let's see. Here's another clip. Let's take a look at this one. See what we got. What is this? Yeah, no, n nothing but grainy, silly footage at the moment. I mean, it is nighttime there. This is typically when you would conduct a strike. Okay, now we're getting that uh, U.S. officials are confirming. Okay, this is news here. U.S. officials are now confirming that it was indeed Israeli aircraft that have struck locations in Iran. Uh, as this is coming across the tape now, we have the Nikkei down 3%. Let's listen and in here for a moment. We talked about Asia FX just getting pummeled. Look at the, the South Korean one once again. We are getting very ever closer to that 1400 level. We're weakening some 1% across the board there. And you're seeing EMFX in Asia basically getting hit substantially. And the flight to safety, I mean, that US five year yield is down some 10 basis points here right now. So it seems like. Yeah, again, so we're down 10 basis points on the 10 year treasury. The Nikkei is down 3%. Bitcoin down to 62,000. If you're just now joining, we're just now getting confirmed reports from the United States uh, that uh, uh, Israel has just retaliated against Iran. This was unexpected. We were not expecting a strike back until after Passover. Uh, it looks like there were three large explosions heard in central Iran. One of the cities in particular would be if, uh, Isfahan. Uh, very likely mispronouncing it, but I'm just going to do my best. Uh, this is the home to a nuclear research uh, university and center. Uh, and there's also another particular city called uh, Natanz, also in central Iran. And uh, this is another location that does also have a nuclear research facility. Uh, so it looks like a strike back at Iran where it hurts. But in addition to that, there are reports that there was a meeting going on between uh, Iranian officials and uh, some of the um, Iranian proxies. And these individuals uh, were apparently having a meeting in Baghdad, uh, and it is potentially possible that an Israeli airstrike attacked that building, potentially bombing that building at the time of the meeting. You can see here, Bitcoin is now struggling at that 61.7 level. Uh, 61.7 is a uh, is sort of a more day trader support line. It's not one of your larger fibs, but it's something to pay attention to. 
you know, I, as I, you know, I may as well mention it. We do a lot of TA in our course member live streams. We do have a coupon code ending tomorrow. I'll put the banner up so we don't have to talk about that. We have war to focus on here, so this is very important. Uh, but uh, yeah, this this is uh, this is very unfortunate. Uh, we um, uh, we are waiting for some more updates here. Again, U.S. officials are now confirming that Israeli aircraft has struck a location uh, in. Iran, uh, potentially two locations, and a striking at the heart of Iran's nuclear program is, is exactly what uh, I was concerned about in a previous video, where in a previous video I was talking about the potential for a uh, dirty bomb to be used uh, by Iran. Uh, this is uh, not a nuclear uh, weapon, but it is a weapon that can contain nuclear contaminants. Uh, and these are really bad. Uh, this is not something that uh, you want to see used. There is only speculation that something like that would be used. But uh, it, it is a risk that Iran now retaliates. This is the big question is we're not so concerned about Israel's attack. We suspected there would be some form of response, but we are now more concerned uh, about what is the potential for Iran to strike back. Uh, and so that has a lot of people worried. Uh, and so uh, we don't know how they're going to respond. We know that they've said they would respond uh, substantially with a substantially larger counterattack. And the risk here is that this issue just continues to get escalated. Uh, and we really break out into some form of all out war in the Middle East, which would be very bad. Uh, this is not something that, that anybody should be looking forward to, obviously. Uh, again, stock market futures down. Here's a video coming through now. Let's listen to a piece here. There's nothing to listen to. It's just to look at, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Very well. So we could see uh, what appears to be some form of a cloud of an explosion uh, or something here. Uh, waiting to see if we have any other coverage of this. Doesn't appear to be a total closure of Iranian airspace right now, but it looks like there's talk about avoiding Iranian airspace at the moment. And again, we are seeing uh, futures and uh, crypto fall on this news. This is uh, your Bitcoin chart. Right now, you're down to 61.4. Ethereum just broke below 3,000. Uh, I'd like to just also provide a quick mention that uh, over the next uh, about uh, 15 days, we're going to be doing a roadshow for House Hack, my real estate startup. Uh, if you want to uh, vote on which areas we should go to, uh, please go to metkevin.com slash roadshow. I've linked it in the description down below, but just M-E-T, so take an E away, metkevin.com slash roadshow, and you could vote on that and, and stay tuned for more information so we can follow up with you. Uh, anyway, okay, looking for now more detail here on, uh, again, we're looking for updates. We're trying to determine uh, exactly if is the attack over now. Uh, was this it? Uh, are we looking at potentially a total of three airstrikes? Uh, that would be airstrikes in Baghdad and two potential cities in uh, Iran. There is talk about strikes in Syria, but I'm not sure about that. I believe those may have just been aircraft uh, borrowing territory, so to speak. I I'm not sure, but uh, let's uh, remember that Syria is... Uh, your largest uh, uh, ally for Iran, and it would make sense for Israeli warplanes to cross over Syrian airspace. Uh, that would be a potential, at least. You could see that right here on screen, just so you could see a little bit of the lay of the land here. You've got Israel right here. Uh, you have uh, Syria here, uh, so crossing over from Israel. Uh, into Syria would make uh, sense. You know, you've got the West Bank here, uh, you've got Israel, Lebanon. So you could cross Syrian airspace. You could then cross Baghdad, attack Baghdad, pop over to uh, the, uh, here's uh, Isfahan. This would be where one of the nuclear uh, research facilities is. is. You could strike here, uh, roughly uh, probably a coordinated time as uh, as your strike. Uh, in Baghdad. It sounds like they were all relatively coordinated. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, one more location, if I could spell that correctly, that was Natanz, uh, Iran. Ah, okay, here we go. Relatively similar location. Isfahan, Natanz is right here. And then you have Tehran. And uh, if I can, I will just go ahead and type in nuclear. 
Yeah, there we go. Natanz nuclear facility temporarily closed is at least what it says. Looks like it has a 3.7 star review. And uh, this is what it looks like. Boy, that looks like it's straight out of a game of Call of Duty or something. Uh, but anyway, there you go. This is what the uh, exterior apparently looks like. And according to Google, that is temporarily closed. And then we do have a university here, which has a uh, nuclear research facility as well. I believe that's the University of Technology over here. I'm not sure if that's what was struck, but I believe that the uh, University of Technology has the nuclear facility. Yeah, Nuclear Technology Research Center. And that is... Uh-huh, is it? Wait, is it at the university or no? Maybe not. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, here we go. The Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center, University of uh, Isfahan. Okay. Uh, that's probably this. It probably is that. But let's see if we can get a search on that specifically. No, we can't because that takes us to Burma. That's not going to work. So anyway, this gives you a little bit of the lay of the land here, uh, so you have a little bit of an idea of where these strikes are relative to each other. We're almost under 61,000 right now on Bitcoin. We are uh, looking at, let's take a peek over here. And therefore attract more institutional funds and higher quality investors. Interesting right now that Bloomberg is not yet discussing uh, these strikes. I have no mainstream coverage of this right now. We do have Marco Rubio tweeting, Israel has the ability to conduct strikes against targets inside Iran without entering Iranian airspace from aircraft over Syrian and Iraqi airspace. Wow. I did not know that. <laughs> Marco Rubio coming to the rescue with uh, foreign intelligence, I suppose. Uh, very interesting. Uh, although, again, a lot of the weapons that are used are, are, are provided by, uh, frankly, uh, America. So it would make sense that uh, we might have a little bit of knowledge into the uh, capabilities of the weapons. Uh, we are still waiting for... Uh, and again, you have to take all of this with a grain of salt because we don't know. I just, you just really see flashes in the sky over here. Hmm. Yeah, not much to really see right here. Okay. So we'll continue looking for uh, more footage uh, from the area, both on uh, Telegram and elsewhere where it could be found. But uh, hearing a, a senator suggest that Israel can actually strike uh, Isfahan from uh, Iraqi airspace is, is relatively incredible. Because if you look right here, if I do a search for the University of Isfahan and grab directions to Baghdad. Let's say that was my daily commute. Uh, well, it's not going to be your daily commute. You're going to be driving for 11 hours. That's almost a thousand kilometers away. I suppose you could send a missile. Uh, you know, something uh, missile probably take about 20 minutes to get there. If you're flying at about 2,000 miles per hour. Yeah, f 15 minutes maybe. You'll probably get there in about 15 minutes. So yeah, I think that's reasonable. Uh, pretty precision targeted weapon. Uh, but a lot of these weapons, keep in mind, are designed to actually scan the area that they're flying over. And what's remarkable about those weapons is their ability to it's almost LiDAR scan, scan. Maybe it's not necessarily LiDAR, it could be vision-based. But um, vision-based scan uh, their strike zones and uh, and compare those to satellite imagery that they were programmed with, so that way they could compare and say, yes, this is indeed the target, uh, or it's not. Uh, you actually also, and this is quite remarkable, you can program some of these missiles uh, to uh, often cruise missiles or missiles that could be launched from, uh, from, let's say, an F-35 or otherwise. You can program missiles to actually circulate in an area so that all of the missiles can strike at the same time. So they don't actually have to be launched to time their 
uh, uh, landing at the same time because the missiles can actually circulate until uh, a coordinated time. Uh, so uh, the, the technology is, is is pretty remarkable right now at being able to uh, uh, strike. Yeah, but uh, this is uh, this is definitely creating tensions here. Uh, we are still waiting for uh, commentary. Does not look like we've got any commentary here other than market action. Find, listen in. I'm trying to find a the level floor. at which it stabilizes. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. IPO proceeds are down 29 percent on year so far. Um, where are we going to finish the year at with that? If That's we... the Nikkei. You can see the Nikkei there at the top down 3.29%. That's down another 1% uh, since we began streaming here. Uh, we have uh, multiple reports now breaking through about Israeli missiles have hit a site in Iran. We believe that to be at least two sites. So we don't have full coverage yet coming through from the mainstream. Uh, though we are looking uh, for more information so we can get live updates to everyone. Uh, again, if you're just now joining, we think there are potentially three strikes that have just occurred. Uh, a strike in Baghdad striking uh, Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard officials potentially in a meeting with proxies, as well as potentially two nuclear research sites south of Tehran in Iran. Uh, without potentially even violating the Irani airspace, at least per commentary from Marco Rubio on X. Uh, Brent oil price is now at about $88, actually now up to $90 on this potential geopolitical risk. You're over $2,400 on oil and a flight to safety with uh, bond yields falling, which is typically a sign of people buying uh, bonds. So not uncommon. You have... Uh, we're looking for more updates now, potentially also from Marco Rubio, who is uh, tweeting on the topic. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the only tweet we have now is six minutes ago that Israel has the ability to conduct strikes against targets in Iran without entering Iranian airspace from aircraft uh, over Syrian and Iraqi airspace. Uh, yeah. Okay, so again, the big concern now is what kind of counterattack are we looking for uh, from Iran? That is going to be the next phase of this escalation. It is not clear if Israel is still striking. We do have uh, Wall Street Silver here uh, who is posting an alleged picture. Again, when we p uh, share screens uh, or video, know that it is very common on social media to old images or for old images to be used. So take everything with a grain of salt, especially if we're as we are just now in a breaking news phase. Uh, we are continuing to hear about significant aircraft activity, uh, potentially warplanes over Israel. I'm sorry, over Baghdad. Uh, again, that's clear. That's over Baghdad. We do have Bitcoin dropping uh, additionally now under sixty one thousand. Uh, there is, let's see here, uh, looking for more updates. We do have a notice to airmen out right now uh, over Iranian airspace. Uh, this is the FAA. FAA notices to airmen. Uh, let's see here. Tehran, uh, FAA, Federal Aviation Administration. The following temporary traffic orientation scheme is available for flights. Temporary suspended. Tra transfer of traffic between Tehran and Baghdad. Temporarily trans uh, uh, suspended. Not authorized uh, for arriving traffic from Baghdad to Tehran and departing traffic from Tehran to Baghdad. So it looks like we have a restriction in place between Baghdad and Tehran at the moment. That does appear to be where uh, warplane activity is, uh, is occurring uh, between the two. Uh, you also have, uh, let's see here, <laughs> this is just some more information here, degradation uh, in Tehran, pilots should report anomalies to air traffic control, all navigation, VFR flight in Tehran, temporarily suspended except military aircraft or uh, emergency. Uh, so, uh, again, like I said, uh, Lilo here is asking, a lot of people are saying videos are fake. That's what I'm saying is, is uh, you know, we're, we're just reviewing what is being covered right now uh, by uh, Reuters, uh, the Associated Press, Bloomberg, and other sources. Uh, any kind of videos you see, 
are, are, it is extremely common that early videos and images that are released are just uh, rehashes of old content. So we won't probably have good imagery uh, for a while until we can get more confirmation. So we're looking for that. Again, we're, we're watching uh, Bitcoin sell down at the moment, uh, trying to recover above 61,000 there at 61.1. Uh, blasts have been heard near an air base uh, in Iran's Esfahan. Uh, again, we, we have been suspecting it was potentially the nuclear information center in uh, Esfahan. And now we are looking at, uh, I'm gonna see if I could see the um, air base, if we can get any sort of, yeah, it does look like here, you do have, I'm not sure uh, if this is potentially where, but there is talk here that there could be explosions heard near this air base. If we just zoom in on this and sort of get just a Google view over here, you can see this is an army air base. It is relatively close to what looks like the city center mall. Uh, as you can see right here, there's a mall. It's got a 4.4 star review. And if we zoom in on the airspace, at least in the photos here, we could see what appear to be uh, military helicopters uh, lined up as well as potentially uh, Patriot missile defense systems. It appeared to be, or, or missile defense systems that appear to be similar to that. Uh, if we zoom in, you could definitely see rows of helicopters here. I mean, these are just standing easy targets right here. Uh, you would probably need more than one missile to really do some damage here. You'd probably want to go for, you know, I mean, frankly, like 10. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably be looking at Tammy. Maybe if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe. Uh, that's probably what, what an opportunity would be, especially if you wanted to do just some damage over here. But then you'd be hurting people. And, and I think Israel's goal was not to hurt people, just to hurt objects. Uh, so it would make a lot more sense to target the actual uh, airfield for the stationary helicopters here. So that's possibly... Uh, we will call that a possible target, although, again, impossible to know right now. Uh, it does say right now that, uh, yeah, uh, Iran's uh, news agency, FARS, has said that explosions have been heard in central Isfahan uh, by the airport. Uh, we are looking for more intel on this right now. Let's see what else I can find. So, unconfirmed Iraqi sources report that airstrikes in the capital city of Baghdad have targeted a building where high, a high-level meeting was being held with the presence of several groups supported by Iran and members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Uh, as we look for more updates here, uh, keep in mind that this is breaking news and we're just looking to get more information here. Uh, yeah, I'm getting Reuters confirming that as well right now. Iran's news agency saying uh, explosions have been heard at the central, in central Isfahan, uh, at the airport. Again, the airport, I believe, is the airbase that we are showing on screen now. Uh, it would make sense, this, uh, it, although it is not confirmed, uh, that this is correct. So we could also be wrong with, uh, this is, this is Isfahan. Let's uh, verify that quickly. Uh, yeah, I just, I typed in Isfahan Air Base, and this is what we got. If I just go to Isfahan, you can see that here. And again, my pronunciation is probably not great, but this is really more Southern. It's over here by the water park. Uh, and there's also a city mall over here, but uh, this air base uh, would be an option as well, a uh, central would be a little bit more. I don't think we have an uh, uh, an airfield here, but we could look for an airport here. Uh, we do have. What do we have here? That's a heliport. Heliport. Turkish Airlines hot. No, that's just an office. And then again, we do have the university. There was some suspicion that the nuclear research facility at the university was struck, uh, which this would be more central. The uh, right here, this would be much more central. So let's collapse some of this. Yeah, so somewhere between here, and then let's get directions to this. Yeah, these are pretty close together. This would work. This is, this is where the airbase is. This is where the university is. Both of these are possible targets. Uh, I'd uh, just like to uh, do a quick shout out. Two things. One thing, 
metkevin.com slash roadshow. We are doing a completely free roadshow for house hack. So if you're accredited or you're interested in mini funds and you're not accredited, I'll be meeting folks in person. Uh, you can learn more about that in the link below or go to metkevin.com slash roadshow. That's M-E-T uh, kevin.com slash roadshow. And then remember the courses on building your wealth, including trade alerts in the stocks and site group uh, with the short we just did on Netflix before the close. Uh, but that, that was a little bit of a, that was a fun one. We'll see how that goes tomorrow morning. But anyway, you get those trade alerts in the stocks and site group link down below as well, or just go to meetkevin.com for that. Okay. Uh, crude futures, we're up. Uh, let's go look at it together here. So we'll just go to CNB Sizzles. Okay, we've got NASDAQ futures down now 1.68%, 141 on S&P. Dow down uh, 121. We've got the Nikkei down 3%. A little bit of a recovery here. Uh, bonds down 11 basis points on the 10-year. We were sitting at about 465 there for a moment. Down now 11 basis points on the 10-year. You can see Brent is about to hit $90 per barrel again. Generally, uh, the, the biggest contributor, at least per Barclays, for oil prices is a uh, supply concern uh, base. So Barclays believes about 70% of the pricing of oil has to do with supply. And so obviously, uh, you know, when we have geopolitical disruptions in the, in the Middle East, we expect there could be some supply concerns. As you can see, oil is now, uh, this is actually, I think, a new high here. It looks like we've got uh, 2430 on uh on on gold at the moment and we are again watching bitcoin here down now 61173 at the moment searching for more updates uh as we look we'll jump on in over here as well bell, bell. Obviously, you've been watching all this. I mean, what, what, what's top of mind for you? I mean, I think you've got a lot of different moves that are coming in here, but the one that's really standing out and the biggest casualty out of any sort of tensions in the Middle East comes down to what you see in the oil space. You've got that risk of regional spillover. It's certainly building at this point in time with this potential response that we're getting from Israel on the Iran uh, strike. So you've got Brent crude spiking here. You're up around $90 a barrel at this point in time. Similar moves coming through for WTI at this point. So that obviously has some other implications. You're seeing that flight to, to, to quality, to havens that's coming through. You mentioned the Japanese yen. We're keeping an eye, of course, on what happens in, in bond yields. Uh, also referencing Fed speak as well, but you do have that. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump on over as well just to see if anyone else is covering this. Uh, good time to mention. Go to metkevin.com slash life to get life insurance in as little as five minutes. Yeah. Uh, you can Apple Pay or Android pay for it. Just close the fucking door. Close the door. Oh, that's j -Pow. Okay, so uh, anyway, we're looking at, let's get some more updates here. Uh, waiting to see, we've got, uh, apparently now there's also a fire in Atlantic City, which is Jersey. This is, uh, you know, that we do have some footage of that right now. Look at that. So I, I would suspect this is unrelated, but it does look like you have a fire uh, in Jersey. That's at the moment. Okay. Let's go back over here. Watch BTC. And let's see if we can get some other updates here. Again, uh, if you're just now joining, explosions. Uh, heard likely uh, strikes by Israel on uh, potentially either a uh, military air base with helicopters in Isfahan, just south of Tehran. Uh, we also potentially have uh, strikes in Baghdad and uh, Natanz in, in uh, Iran. So a few locations here for strikes by Israel. We were expecting these strikes to occur after Passover. Uh, however, that uh, clearly appears to just have been a way to uh, delay uh, attention on Israel for a few days as they uh, planned their response here. Looks like you've now got uh, a Fly Dubai and Emirates flight diverting uh, around Iran. And uh, again, waiting for more coverage to see exactly what's going on uh, out of Iran. Uh, it does not look like we have m really I'm surprised no mainstream coverage of this just yet. Let's bounce around for a moment just to see, see if they're covering it now. Tonight, John. 
Yeah, it does look like they are. Finally. But now reporting that in Isfahan that there have been significant uh, strikes there. So let's stay with it. You mentioned we've been expecting this. Just for our viewers, i just go through the timeline. Remember, back on April 1st, Israel was blamed uh, for an attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. And then, if, as Nick noted, uh, back last Saturday on the 13th, Iran deployed more than 300 drones and other uh, aerial right. weapons to attack on Israel. After that, Nick, the president of the United States, who helped the United States, Britain, other Western allies, helped to repel the Iranian attack. And the appeal from President Biden to Israel was, you proved they couldn't hit you. You know, don't do anything provocative. Don't do anything that... Further right, that's sort of the idea that, hey, like, why, why expand it? Obviously, you could you could declare victory here is the argument. Declare victory and, and you're good. You don't need to respond to Iran. Uh, Israel uh, clearly decided that the answer is no, we do, and we will. Iran has, of course, threatened... Uh, to to respond uh, forcefully uh, to these responses. Has the Prime Minister dialed back what he might have otherwise planned? Certainly there's been a huge international push. You had the British Foreign Secretary, the German Foreign Secretary here a couple of days ago. Listen to ABC for a moment. Senior U.S. official telling us that Israel has fired uh, at least one ballistic missile or some sort of missile that hit a site inside Iran. There are reports of other sites uh, across the region being hit as well. Unclear if there are any casualties. We don't also know the nature of this site, what it was. Was it an Iranian nuclear facility, a military base, something else? We don't know that at this point. We do know that Israel has been saying, particularly its military, that there will be a response to that. South yeah, this is true. I want to show you for a moment what could potentially be one of these strikes. Uh, again, please, 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 with footage, always take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes these these images are, are from other wars or whatever, but this is being reported as a target being hit in Isfahan tonight. Let's listen in. To what Iran did on Saturday, but this <sighs> Hold is on. The exact kind of response that Iran has been... Sorry. Audio problem. Fixed it. Wow. Here it is again. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty intense. So that's uh, an example of potentially some strikes here. Let's listen in here now. Comes from now multiple uh, Iranian semi-official news outlets. Uh, the latest from Press TV reporting uh, that an explosion was heard near Iran's central city of Esfahan. The reason is still unknown. And that uh, echoes what we... What do you mean the reason is still unknown? What are you smoking? What, was 300 drones... Uh, not enough of a reason? Come on. Uh, Iranian state media now reporting that tonight's airstrike may have targeted the 8th tactical airspace. Thanks for this comment here. Of the Iranian Air Force uh, within the Isfahan International Airport, which contains multiple squadrons of F-30, uh, sorry, F-14s. Uh, F-14 uh, Tomcats. F-14, uh, these are uh, Grunmans. They're two-seat. Two engines, twin tail. Uh, Tomcats were actually originally developed for the U.S. Navy. These were uh, had their first flight in uh, 1970. They were retired in 2006. So the U.S. Navy has not used them for a while. Uh, there are about 712 of them that have been used. The uh, Islamic uh, Republic of Iran... Uh, is really expected to be the only group that still uses these. Uh, so uh, that is possible. Now, if we jump on over again to what we had, this was our map that we had. We suspected it might have been this army base right here. Let's go ahead and add a destination and just see if we can see. Ah, it could be a squadron over here. This is certainly not central Isfahan, but... Uh, it does look like we have an airport here, and it's unclear if we can see any sort of hangars, but obviously there are multiple hangars off different parts of the airport here. So 
unclear if uh, we would be able to see any kind of parked uh, military vehicles. Sometimes we can, though, uh, as we saw over in the uh, lower location. Let's do a search here again. As we saw here, here we could see multiple helicopters, uh, military helicopters parked. So we think it would be any of these three potential targets. So that would be the uh, Isfahan International Airport, the military airbase here, or the University of Isfahan. Again, the goal of uh, Israel, the stated goal, was not to hurt uh, individuals, but instead to target sites uh, within uh, Iran. Again, now waiting for a potential response. Let's listen in again. Regret it. Um, the skies over this city are quiet. There's no sirens going off here. We're not aware of sirens anywhere else in Israel at the moment. Um, we are beginning to get a few more details of uh, the strikes uh, or these explosions, at least as far uh, that we know about now in Isfahan. Northwest of Isfahan is what the uh, Fars mm. news agency in Iran, semi official news agency there, is reporting. So we are beginning to build. Build up a that international airport is in the north east, but okay. Uh, that we've been tracking over the past few hours. Um, flight radar tracking of flights in the skies above Iran have indicated within the past hour or so that flights have been changing their flight paths to avoid. Yeah. This guy's birds chirping in the background is way too peaceful for what's going on here. Let's listen in over here for a moment you know, completely uh, crippled a lot of regular working families who've seen their earnings and their savings completely dry up because the Lebanese power. Uh, hold on a sec. Is that, is that the right feed? It sounds like a it. A chapter in this ongoing uh, crisis for Lebanon, but they are powerless. This country is powerless to stop Hezbollah because it is the most powerful force here, m both militarily uh, and politically. And if Hezbollah decides to take Lebanon to war, that exactly that is exactly what happens. And as Matt says there, even if it's not in their best interest, this country or Hezbollah for that matter it'll happen in order to project strength Hezbollah knows that Israel is an enormous uh, adversary that, uh, that that it would be really up against it if it decided to, to open another front but there was a lot of speculation that, that is exactly what Hezbollah would want to do whilst Israel was engaged in the fight uh, in Gaza on October 8th uh, you know, Hezbollah launched a number of attacks into Israel. There's a real sense that, uh, that immediately uh, Israel would be under attack from uh, both, uh, both sides, from both uh, Hamas in Gaza and also from the north, uh, from here in Lebanon. And ever since, the border war has been bubbling. It's been getting more and more serious. Yes, it has been. Uh, a quick note, Iranian state media is now reporting that all flights to the Iranian capital of Tehran, uh, as well as the cities of Isfahan, Shiraz, and any other airport in western Iran have been suspended. Uh, until further notice, uh, this, uh, this again, very clearly uh, now an Israeli strike against uh, Iran and uh, the capital of Iraq, Baghdad. We are now watching, of course, uh, Bitcoin falling under 61,000 again as we also pay attention to futures with uh, pre-market futures all down uh, more than 1% for U.S. Uh, stocks. The Japanese Nikkei down 3.1. Bond yields on the 10-year now down 12 basis points with oil sitting nearly at $90 per barrel and gold at 2424. Let's keep listening in. Close to one city, Isfahan, um, is only, is only as far as we can tell at the moment, part of the picture of what we think may be happening. But it's going to take time for us to look at what we're here, look at the details we're getting, cross-reference them, and, and, tr and try to get some better clarity on them. Okay. Yeah, and Nick, as you're talking here, let's go to Fox. And, and if it is confirmed in Isfahim, this city that is just about 200 miles to the south of Tehran, this would be significant because it shows the Israelis are stepping mm -hmm. up their strikes against Iranian nuclear facilities. Yeah, you right. might remember back in 2020, it was November of 2020, the Israelis in a covert operation killed the top Iranian nuclear scientist, Mohammad Fahar Sadi. Now, this is a man who was responsible for years when it came to Iran's nuclear program and their developments toward a nuclear weapon. Remember, when the Iran nuclear deal from 2015 collapsed, Iran started enriching uranium closer and closer to weapons-grade mm. material. Yes. And the biggest concern for Israel was that they would 
ultimately create a nuclear weapon and then attach that warhead to a ballistic missile, like a missile that was fired toward mm. Israel over the weekend. Yeah, well, correct. And now keep in mind that there is a potential that Israel actually struck one of the nuclear research centers in Isfahan. We are still unclear exactly where these strikes have taken place within Isfahan. We have three suspects, either the nuclear research center, uh, an uh, air base with, with helicopters, or an air base uh, by the International Airport of Isfahan uh, with F-14 fighter jets, which those vehicles uh, were retired by the United States Navy in 2006. Let's keep listening. Country's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and others, that they have the targets already chosen inside Iran, and they are able to ratchet up the pressure on the Iranian regime if there is any sort of response to this counter strike following the attack last weekend that was conducted by the Iranians. Trace. Trey Yanks, great information. Stand by if you would. We'll get back to you as the news warrants. I just want to read this. Trey was, was talking about uh, airspace closing in Israel, that it's not closed yet, but the Associated Press has just uh, sent this down. The first paragraph reads as follows. Commercial flights began diverting their routes early Friday morning, which it is early Friday morning now in the Middle East, over western Iran without explanation as one semi-official news agency in the Islamic Republic claimed there had been explosions explosions heard over the city of Isfahan, which Trey was just talking about. I want to bring in the chief national security correspondent, Jennifer Griffin. She is live for us at the Pentagon. Jen, what are you learning about this? Well, Trace, the Pentagon is not officially commenting on any of the... Yeah, quick response as well. It looks like now the Iranian Secu uh, Supreme National Security Council is holding an emergency meeting uh, just now on uh, evaluating a response to Israel's strikes. It does appear that Israel's strikes at the moment are over, uh, but that is unclear. They are, quote, limited in nature. So what we have heard so far from Iranian press is that there were three explosions in the Isfahan area, which as, Trace has, as Trey has explained, that is the location of the Natanz uh, nuclear facility. We have no indication as of yet that the Natanz facility was the target or any of the nuclear facilities were a target tonight. You could have Correct. situations where there are air defense systems that would be targeted. Uh, what we know from past reporting on the situation in Iran and what its capabilities are is that Iran is very limited in mm -hmm. terms of, and we saw this on Saturday. Marco Rubio just responded and said Isfahan is home to the uh, Katami Air Base uh, that is located in the northeast of the city. That's what I thought. We heard a reporter there say northwest. I didn't think that was accurate. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, let's see if I can search that air base up. Uh, the Katami, uh, if I throw, no, see, I don't get that. Katami Air Base. I'm not exactly sure where that is. Ah, the Katami, okay, here we go. Here's a website. I don't know, global security, I don't know much about this website. This does, um, this does show us a little bit here. Katami Air Base is located in the northeast of Isfahan, uh, within the Shahid Behetzti International Airport. The base is part of the Western Area Command of the Iranian Air Force, used for military uh, and civilian uh, purposes, and it does house uh, squadrons of Air Force fighters. Got it. Uh, yep, and the F-14 fighter jets. Okay, so if I can again get that airport, I believe that is exactly one of the targets that we were looking at. Yeah, it is. So that would be... Let's go ahead and search these three targets again. So uh, it, again, appears to be this airport that was the target, uh, but uh, waiting for waiting for confirmation of that because we do have an Army air base here with helicopters. We have the university uh, right here with potential uh, nuclear enrichment. However, this is very close to uh, civilians and uh, obviously you know students and the hospital. And then outside here, we have the International Airport, where a portion of this airport could clearly have been used for uh, military purposes. Again, we're unsure if that would be... I mean, I, I assume it would likely be hangars like this, right at the end of the runway, very quick and easy to deploy. But you have many hangars here. Uh, all of these could be military hangars, or they could just be privately owned hangars. We have no idea. But as you can see, these are all hangars here. 
and usually, well, let's see, look at that army jet hanger, see that? Usually at the end of the runway, that's where you're going to have uh, your your quick uh, quick access or quick response hangers to, uh, uh, to be able to take off relatively rapidly uh, down the runway. So waiting to uh, get more confirmation on exactly what we have over here. Looks like there's a little hospital outside of that. Uh, airport, and then you have a, ooh, an indoor swimming pool. I want to see photos of it in the area as well. Oh, look at that. Indoor swimming pool, pretty close to where these uh, strikes may have occurred. Eh. All right. That point, Jen, I want to go back as you're talking about the whole concept here. And just for context, people should know you know the Middle East better than anybody. You've spent years and years over there covering this. My, my question when you talk about a limited strike is, does it matter in the perspective of Iran? If this is a limited strike, does that make them more reticent to strike back immediately? Oh, they are going to strike back. Iran will strike back. Uh, the question now is how and where and how strong. It's not good. That's that's why markets are upset because Iran will strike back. Anything out at this point in time, Trace? I think this is a very very tense moment in the Middle East. I don't think anybody can say that this is over. I think one of the reasons you saw such stern warnings and uh, uh, and you saw. Uh, from not only the White House, but also other allies, such as David Cameron, who flew to Israel to try and implore the Israelis not to take retaliatory action. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is that everyone knows that the escalation ladder goes up pretty quickly after um, after this kind of a strike. So it may Right. And, and that's the thing, too, is it came as a surprise in terms of timing, given you did have uh, Iran, uh, sorry, Israel just uh, just a couple days ago mentioned that we uh, probably won't strike back until after Passover. Uh, and then, of course, here you are uh, striking on uh, the 18th, which, uh, you know, is, is actually just before Passover. So Passover, I believe, is the 22nd to 30th this month. So there were a lot of folks expecting uh, this attack would, would not happen until after uh, and uh, it has clearly now occurred beforehand. Somebody here just donated and said, uh, thanks for your fast coverage. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, Octavio. Jackie says, Powell's excuses to cut rates has arrived. Or is this inflationary? And these are Powell's excuses to not cut rates. That's uh, entirely possible that now Jerome Powell will actually be less inclined to cut rates and that could potentially be problematic for what that means for recessionary considerations uh, in the United States, uh, as well as potentially globally, as uh, you know, as they say, when uh, when the United States sneezes, the world gets a cold. <sighs> Who knows? Uh, speaking of getting sick, remember, you can always get life insurance in as little as five minutes by going to metkevin.com slash life. Metkevin.com slash life. You can sign up in Apple Pay or Android Pay in as little as five minutes. And it is what Lauren and I use for life insurance. You do now have Bitcoin dropping rapidly again. You're now at 60,300. Looks like you're about to cross into the 59,000 range potentially uh, as we are candle sticking down right now on Ethereum uh, as we cover this in response to Israeli counterattacks and now suspicions of a larger uh, counter response coming from Israel. You have flights canceled. You have notices to airmen between Tehran and uh, and Baghdad and specific airspace is now being shut down. It's unclear that further strikes are occurring beyond the strikes that have already taken place against Isfahan and Baghdad. Uh, it is a perfect opportunity to mention that you should subscribe to the channel as well. And then, of course, if you want to meet me in person, go to metkevin.com slash roadshow to learn about house hack. We're going to be at various different locations. Vote on which location you'd like. And then remember, we have an expiring coupon code on the programs on building your wealth expiring tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. If you want to bundle up or if you have questions, just email us at staff at meetkevin.com. Staff at meetkevin.com. All right, let's listen in. That we saw from Iran last week. This is very small. Um, so that's maybe a bit of good news, though I think 
Um, many were hoping that uh, we might move back to shadow war, right? Like so that uh, Israel might respond, but in a way that we didn't know it was Israel, that we didn't know um, that it was in response to what had happened last weekend. So it's still a very concerning moment. Uh, as, as the general just said, wait 72 hours. There's a lot we don't know. Um, will Iran retaliate? Um, it, are we going to just see this continue to escalate? That is very concerning if it does. Um, we really are in an unprecedented moment, and it uh, is a precarious moment for the world, including the U.S. homeland. You use words like small and measured with regard to the response uh, from Israel tonight. I'm curious what we do know. Uh, about uh, just, just keep in mind, Iran is not going to think a strike on Israel's air bases uh, or their cabinet meeting in Baghdad is small and measured. Uh, Iran is not going to see it that way. Iran is going to be very upset by this. Uh, and uh, the question now is what kind of response we're going to get. That was uh, failed, but it is even more so tonight. I think, you know, you, you have other nations there that are very concerned about the situation. You had Jordan uh, help with the strikes to take down the drones and the missiles on Saturday night. Um, Saudi Arabia has expressed uh, concern about the situation. Mm -hmm. So this is... Uh, a moment in which the Middle East is is on the brink, and yeah. how we respond is going to be a big part of this equation. Yeah, and there were talks today, Brett, how it, from Cotter, and I was talking about this with Trey Yanks a little bit, coming out of Cotter saying that the United States was in negotiations with Israel and willing to give the go-ahead about strikes on Rafah in, in southern Gaza, the question being that the strikes would be in return for not retaliating against Iran. So the question is, we watch, we have live pictures of the White House, we're kind of watching all of our posts there. When do we hear something from the White House? Uh, Iranian media has just declared, I'm sorry, uh, Iranian media is reporting that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard uh, has just declared a state of maximum alert at all its bases and camps in Iran. Uh, and uh, they are now activating their air defense systems, which is uh, interesting given that the attack occurred like an hour and 20 minutes ago. So maybe you should have had your air defense systems on earlier. Listen, the Rip. U.S. was always uh, tiptoeing through this diplomatically, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get Israel to be uh, cautious in its response. But Israel sent no signals that they were listening to that. It didn't mm -hmm. matter about what they were saying about Rafa. They were going to respond to this historic attack of 300-plus projectiles uh, on the state of Israel. And for the folks who were saying, you know, it was all taken down and in the big picture, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. And had those missiles gotten through, um, we don't know the death toll in, inside Israel. And tonight, again, the Hezbollah question, which uh, Jennifer raised at the end there, is the biggest one, because should it get fully activated, the U.S. would have to be in a position that it would defend Israel. And right. uh, that bec that becomes a different question. Yeah, it really does. Um, it looks like most flights in Iran, uh, at, for, uh, specifically the uh, Isfahan airport, appear to be completely canceled uh, and that people should leave the airport, not indicating any potential that this is just a flight delay. It's just a complete cancellation. Uh, Bitcoin just broke under 60,000. Uh, it is back at 60,000. Uh, it's under 60,000. It's at 59.9 uh, at the moment. And uh, that, that is a big psychological level uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, Iran uh, now multiple times here activating air bases and air defenses. Again, a little late. Uh, but uh, here we go. I think what we're seeing right now, based on reports from... Uh, uh several semi-formal uh, 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 news sites in Iran. I believe that what we're seeing here is, is in this first piece would be selective airstrikes, which let me tell you, Trace, is really interesting. Israel's Air Force uh, uh, has a lot of AI integrated into it, and they're capable of striking Iran 
from outside of Iranian airspace, which is- Yeah, okay, that's copying what Marco Rubio said. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with AI. Uh, uh, it, it has to do with uh, missiles uh, being able to be programmed to float in an airspace until it's time to strike, to coordinate a strike, uh, and, and also observe, uh, observe ground imagery and compare that to either pre-programmed imagery or uh, satellite imagery to ensure that the target aligns uh, with uh, what the uh, missile is being programmed for. To now, you know, listen to Fox saying, it was AI. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying there isn't AI, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's the correct conclusion to draw at this point. That this is a, uh, yes, AI missiles have struck Iran. No, no, Fox. Let's not go there now. Significant, but it can be de-escalated and it can be put back in the box. And that's really going to come with, uh, with the world superpowers stepping in and talking to both sides. Obviously, the United States with Israel, Russia with Iran, and talking about the need to contain and de-escalate. So we'll see, as Elizabeth said, just how significant these were, attacks were or weren't and whether this could be the end of it and whether Iran will then respond. But it is important to point out this is how World War I started. It was, a, uh, it was something that essentially spiraled out of control. I don't think this is going to happen here. That's well, probably how many wars start. Is it starts, you know, with, with one death or one killing and one attack and spirals out of control. This is true. And the fact of the matter is the Middle East, uh, after the attack by Hamas on uh, Israel, has quite frankly turned to a tinderbox. Uh, and and these tit for tat strikes uh, escalate uh, issues in the region and and, and make this uh, substantially more challenging, uh, especially since uh, you have to remember the the United States is trying to advocate for as much peace as possible, suggesting hey let's let's maybe maybe just declare victory here Israel. Uh, Israel's taken the input from other countries, uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, whatever, and has decided, no, we, we are going to strike back, initially suggesting it would be after uh, Passover uh, and instead uh, responding with a strike right before Passover. Clearly unexpected, uh, clearly w well, appears to have been able to strike and target in Baghdad uh, and likely simultaneously at Isfahan and potentially Natanz, which uh, are cities just south of Tehran, the capital of uh, Iran. Uh, potentially air basing uh, F 14s, which are uh, 1970s uh, vintage fighter jets that uh, were retired by the United States in 2006. Israel is not. I don't think we're at war yet, but I believe that we are at the at the, at the trickle stages of a, of a of a low intensity conflict with Iran, mm -hmm. and that's what these uh, uh, terror groups like to do. They like that low burn, that slow kindle. Question is, is Israel really going to step it up? I think we're seeing right. the beginning stages of what could of what could potentially, like Jennifer Griffith said, intensify more over the hours. Oh, now this is interesting. There's a claim here that. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard has claimed to have shot down several drones uh, over Isfahan. Now, that would be really interesting because if, uh, if drones were spotted over Isfahan, that should have been like a pretty clear heads up that, hey, like, you're being surveilled and we're about to attack. Uh, that is, uh, that's quite interesting. I'm not sure if that is true, but uh, that is a claim circulating at the moment uh, as uh, as we watch uh, Bitcoin bob around 60,000 and uh, uh, the um, pre-market future sitting down 1.33% on the Dow, 159 on the S&P, 194, nearly 2% on the NASDAQ. You've got the Nikkei in Japan down 317. You've got uh, bonds down 12.3 basis points on the 10-year, gold down 24 uh, sorry, up to 2426 and Brent at 9016 uh, after this uh, strike by Israel. Now, of course, the question is what kind of response are we going to get from uh, Iran? 
joint tactical uh, uh, controller unit. And these are the guys who can get on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's a tier one asset trace. They can infiltrate into enemy territory, commando level reconnaissance capabilities. And they'll work in tandem with those F-15s and specifically those F-35s. Wouldn't be surprised if they were working with those F-35s to take down those 350-plus missiles and drones yep. that were fired into Israel. And those assets can infiltrate enemy territory undetected uh, to be able to work with those uh, missiles to get really, really high-end selectivity for where those shots are going to go. It's a big, important piece of Israel's Air Force, uh, and, they're, and they're incredible. So I wouldn't be surprised if those uh, uh, operatives are sprinkled in around this. This comes from the Associated Press. The dateline here is Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The quote is, Iran fires air defense batteries in several provinces. The state-run IRNA news agency reports without elaborating. So Iran is, is apparently trying to either protect itself that sounds like the the assessment here yeah I, I would i would i would say that that's probably a very fair assessment so iran is going to go into a defensive posture right now they're going to start uh, uh 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 upping their air defense capabilities to try and take down any of these israeli fighter jets that are mm -hmm. coming in for these uh hyper focused airstrikes um and they're going to and israel's now you know it's, it this is this is a this is a high-end gunfight is how I like to look at this. When you've got two, uh, two, two, two forces and one's coming at the other and the other's defending, it's almost, whoever's more aggressive and hits straighter is going to win. And so Israel right now, real selective. Iran trying to probably take out those F-15s and those F-35s. Mm -hmm. Israel knows better. They'll stay out of that Iranian airspace as long as they can. Uh, uh, but again, like, uh, like Jennifer reported, I think that we're going to start to see more of a drip escalation here. Don't think we're going to go to war yet. I wouldn't call it that. We're in, a, we're, we're in a higher low intensity conflict for lack of a better way of explaining mm -hmm. it. It's just unfolding in the air. But Esfahan, where the nuclear yeah. program uh, lives. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, very quickly, I just want to bring in uh, Jennifer Griffin, our chief national security correspondent. Jen, what are you hearing? Um, Trace, I just want to clarify uh, what I'm hearing, and because I, I was listening to what Aaron was saying, and I just want to clarify that we can confirm from a well-placed military source that this was a limited strike, and it may have been from uh, it, it. There is no indication that this was a manned aircraft that took that caused these explosions. So any speculation that there were uh, manned aircraft F-35s involved in this strike, we cannot confirm that at this point in time, it is more likely to have been missiles that caused these. Um, yeah, and keep in mind, those could have been launched, as Marco Rubio said, from outside of Iranian airspace. Marco Rubio gave a well-timed update. We're not sure if his update is accurate, uh, but he does say here that Israel has the ability to conduct strikes against targets inside of Iran without entering Iranian airspace from aircraft over Syrian and Iraqi airspace. Uh, now, uh, that's possible through uh, coordinated missiles that can be launched and programmed to strike specific targets uh, within Iran, and quite frankly, at the same time, since you can hover or float these missiles or circle the missiles is more likely uh, uh, until a pre-programmed time or until a command is received to, to actually deploy the missile. So it's it's quite uh, quite impressive. But yes, it is possible that Iranian airspace was not violated here, but that's not stopping Bitcoin from dropping below 60,000. Let's keep listening. Likely a limited strike and most likely um, uh, not carried out by manned aircraft. Trace. And I'm just wondering, Jen, just so we can be all be on the same page here, uh, no indication that the Natanz nuclear site has been struck, but, but it would be an assumed target. Fair? Uh, not necessarily. Um, there are other targets in that area. There are air defense systems. There are missile launch sites. Uh, we, we really can't speculate at this moment about what the target of the strikes. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to wait to hear from the Israelis. The Pentagon is not commenting on this. U.S. officials are absolutely mum. Uh, we are not getting any official confirmation that it was even the Israelis that carried out um, a strike inside Iran, but uh, but we there are other 
indications um, based on reports from the region and mm -hmm. from the Iranians themselves that uh, Iran's territory has been struck. We also are seeing just cross the wires right now that Iran's Security Council is uh, meeting as we speak. And as I mentioned before, Trace, the Iranian foreign minister had just landed in New York and began his interview uh, on a rival network uh, when the, the reports of the first explosions occurred. And during that interview, he did say say that Iran would likely respond if Israel decided to carry out a retaliatory Right. And this is Iran has been very clear about striking back. Uh, and and remember, it was just a few days ago that Iran suggested uh, that uh, they would strike uh, strike back. So this is the potential, right? Uh, potential strike back. Uh, Iran has suggested they would strike back potentially with a weapon that they have never used before, which has sort of raised these concerns and the stakes that are, are we potentially going to escalate this into a larger uh, conflict? And now it's going to come right back down to the Iranian response. Remember, when we, um, I shouldn't say we, when, when Israel uh, straw, I mean, the United States basically funds Israel, so let's, you could call it basically American assets, uh, funded by American taxpayers at least. But when uh, Israel attacked the uh, Iranian consulate in Damascus, we were expecting some form of retaliation from Iran. We weren't expecting, you know, over 180 drones and multiple missiles. So the retaliation has certainly been escalated by Iran, but let's keep listening in here. Open warfare uh, between Iran and Israel with potentially both sides launching attacks on each other from their own soil for the first time uh, in history. It's really astounding uh, and it's terrifying. Uh, I appreciate Jen's very accurate reporting because uh, we don't know uh, that the Israelis did this uh, through the air. Uh, the Biden administration, unfortunately, has been very clear that they would not support uh, uh, such a strike. And there are certain ways that uh, the Israelis would need our support. They also have a history of having a fantastic cyber operation. In fact, they exploded uh, the utilities uh, and the power system at the Natanz nuclear site, we now know years later, uh, mm -hmm. through uh, a cyber attack. So. They, they have a, a fantastic covert capability. We also are hearing, I'm hearing from folks in the region that there have been strikes in Syria uh, and strikes in Baghdad, more focused on IRGC operational level mm -hmm. uh, uh, operatives and facilities. Uh, so multiple things could be true uh, at the same time, but at yep. the end of the day, this de-escalation strategy, you know, every time the United States says, T tap the brakes and pulls back, the regional bully Iran s has seen that as opportunity and pushed forward. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's <laughs> when do they reverse course? And that's a great question. When did yeah, okay. So again, we're still waiting for exact information on where the strikes uh, took place. It, it, it does appear to be obvious that at this point, the strikes have taken place in Isfahan. Uh, we believe that's either the uh, Isfahan International Air Base uh, or uh, the um, uh, the army base below that. Uh, it's worth just comparing the distance between Tehran uh, and, uh, and and this city here. Uh, you're about 300 kilometers apart, and uh, you've got the international airport here, as well as this uh, uh, Shahid army air base here, housing multiple uh, helicopters here in this region. And so unclear still yet uh, where this attack is uh, or has taken place. Uh, however, this uh, this does show that uh, honestly, it, I mean, this this sort of sends a message that Iran is uh, or sorry, Israel is able to strike without anyone anticipating this coming. You know, this this really came as a surprise and uh, a lot of folks are um, uh, somewhat shocked uh, at how much of a surprise this was. Let's listen in a little more here. Then it could, in fact, rethink its nuclear uh, doctrine, its, its nuclear policy. 
now Iran has been saying up until this point that its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes, something many countries uh, do not take at face value. Uh, but they have said that if there is this case where Israel does go after its nuclear assets, uh, then that could uh, change uh, the equation quite significantly. Also, uh, this, uh, this commander saying that they know where the Israeli nuclear assets are, for example, and that they could go uh, after those assets. Now, of course, a lot of this could be posturing. A lot of this is, uh, is for public consumption, even domestic consumption uh, within Iran as well. But this is the response that we have been hearing over recent days from Tehran, that if Israel goes after its assets, then the response would be more significant coming the other way. Abby. Paula Hancock, thank you, and stand by for us as well. Here to give us some more context about this. Uh, oh, we're getting a couple things from the wire here. The sound of three explosions has been heard near an army base northwest of Isfahan. Interesting, because the uh, air base is northeast or south, but okay. Uh, air defense systems have been activated uh, in response to uh, present suspected drone still in the area, apparently. Okay. ...is a facility... Oh, is today, is that true? Is today uh, Kamani's birthday, Iran's supreme leader? Really? Let's take a look at that. That is very interesting. Thank you for donating uh, $2 for mentioning that. April 19th. How interesting. It is the 19th there. Wow. How, that is a very interesting fun fact. Wow, good, good call. Uh, all right. That's an important facility because it's the second step in how nuclear bombs are made. And if Israel can take that linchpin out, then uh, the Iran nuclear program is somewhat set back. To say that Israel can ha launch some kind of air attack right now, given the extent of what the Iranian um, nuclear program is right now, is just is not a good assumption. So, but this, I think, the why is they're telling Iran that if we wanted to, we could reach out and touch that if we had to. So, so, Major General, just as you were speaking, we are now hearing that there have been explosions near an army base there in Isfahan. What do we know about the military capabilities that are located in that area? Well, they're likely air defense platforms. They have uh, those kind of weapon systems protecting all of their nuclear facilities here. So, again, Israel decides to attack, come, come, due, uh, come due east across Iran, takes out air defense platforms that exist in there. And to General Marx's point, do they attack with a cruise missile? I likely think that they uh, use manned aircraft in this, in this kind of operation to ensure that their, their targeting was very precise. Maybe they did not want to hit that facility on purpose, but they went after the military targets there. So the kind of military is there is there to protect it just from what Israel did, which, again, the why becomes sends the signal to Iran that says we can come after this facility if we want to. All right, General Lyons, thank you for all of that. Uh, let's bring in Matt Booth. Yeah. He's a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations and a columnist at The Washington Post. Matt, Max, you've been listening patiently to all of this reporting. Um, the big question tonight, is this the escalation that everyone has been fearing? It certainly looks like it, Abby, although we don't know the details. I mean, I think what you're really seeing is that the rules of the road in the Middle East are being rewritten in real time. You're seeing red lines suddenly become very, very blurry. Last Saturday, the Iranians launched a massive attack on Israel with over 300 drones and missiles. That's something that's never happened before. Iran and Israel have been fighting a shadow war since 1979. But they have never directly attacked each other's territory. You've seen a lot. Of yeah, a shadow war is basically a way of suggesting that, you know, Ira Iran has been funding uh, Israel's uh, or attacks against Israel via proxies like Hamas uh, or Hezbollah or Palestinian Jihad, other paramilitary organizations in Iraq, uh, their ally Syria, uh, West Bank militants. Uh, these are all potential uh, allies of Iran or potentially groups funded uh, or backed by Iran. Very hard to do because I'm not sure they have a great idea. Okay, now Iran is suggesting that Iran will target Israeli nuclear sites uh, with a response. That that would be very bad. That's very early in the morning, right? So I'd assume they're striking early in the morning in part to avoid casualties, to avoid killing a lot of Iranians, probably trying to target sites without causing mass, mass casualties. The other thing I would note is if these reports are accurate about explosions inside Iran, that suggests the Israeli airstrikes are getting through, which is 
not what happened with the Iranian airstrikes on Saturday when 99% of the Iranian projectiles were down. This suggests, obviously, that Iranian air defenses are not as good as the Israeli air defenses, and the Israelis have more potent air power than the Iranians. But, you know, where this goes from here, I think, remains very much undetermined. And now, just as on Saturday, it was up to Israel. Now it's really up to Iran. And look, I I don't want to sound alarmist, but this is a serious moment. And as you pointed out, what we saw this weekend has never happened before. Now we are in a moment of real uncertainty. The the decision-making lies between Benjamin Netanyahu and an Iranian regime that has been accelerating its attacks on Israel. You heard Barack Ravid talking there about what he's hearing from Israeli officials, that they think that this can end at a particular point. Yeah, well, that's the problem is when does this end? I want to give you just a recollection now, if you're just now joining of what's going on. Uh, We have uh, reports of multiple strikes against uh, Iran, Uh, one of them actually in Baghdad, uh, which apparently there was an uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard meeting occurring in uh, Baghdad. Uh, and uh, that was with potential supporters of Iran. Apparently, that was struck likely by some form of uh, jet, uh, military aircraft, uh, from uh, Baghdad. It is possible that either from Baghdad or from Syria, uh, missiles were launched to strike locations inside of uh, Iran, potentially in uh, Isfahan. We have a few locations in Isfahan. That would be an airport in Isfahan, which might be housing F-14 fighter jets. We do have an army air base uh, right here as well, which houses uh, military uh, helicopters. And uh, there is also the uh, Iranian nuclear facility, uh, research facility here at the University of Isfahan. So multiple uh, targets here, though uh, Israel did suggest they were looking for a target outside of of, of, uh, the potential for causing civilian casualties. So it's uh, likely that uh, some form of hangar or, or airfield was attacked. Uh, and uh, as well as uh, Baghdad, where uh, leaders were expected to be discussing uh, this, um, or, I mean, whatever it is they're discussing. But uh, at the same time as this, we do have bonds down now, 13 basis points on the 10-year. Brent oil is up uh, 3.8% at 9048 per barrel. We have gold sitting at 2423 right now with futures all down uh, between one and a quarter to about one and two thirds of a percent as well as the Nikkei uh, in international markets, down now 3.5%. All explosions tonight, uh, well, Iranian officials are blaming or suggesting that explosions uh, tonight have been explosions that were interceptions and that there were no impacts. That's, uh, uh, that is their claim. Uh, the... Uh, there were explosions heard near army bases. Where un- it's unclear uh, if there have been actual impacts, but Iran is claiming that three of those strikes were intercepted. So uh, we'll write that down here. Iran claiming three strikes in Iranian territory uh, were intercepted. We have a summary of this uh, in case uh, in case you're interested. I'm sort of just live updating a little summary of it. I have this little free website I like to throw research and, and content on. If you want to see it, you can go to it. It's ehack.com. Uh, and it's just somewhere where I like to throw sort of notes of what's going on. And so I'll keep sort of updating that uh, with a summary so far. But uh, we're waiting to see now, obviously, uh, what kind of news we might get in terms of uh, an international reaction, a reaction from the United States, a reaction from uh, the the Iranian Supreme Council. Uh, We've been hearing there's the potential for, let's see here. uh, Oh, wow. Marco Rubio uh, has just posted, uh, we're hearing that, uh, Khomeini is having a blast today on his birthday. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, now we have reports coming through of Iranian air defenses fighting an unknown object, potentially a drone, uh, in the air in Iran. This is happening now. Uh, we've got, uh, more claims again that, uh, weapons were shot down by Iran, uh, in that uh, impacts on the ground were not made. That's also unclear at the moment. And uh, we are 
waiting to get. I mean, here's some footage. I'm not sure if this is going to show us sounds of explosions or what. Let's see here. What is this? Yeah, I can't even hear anything. Remember, anytime we have clips or footage like this, it's always important to remember that sometimes these are fake <coughs> video clips, uh, so we have to be careful with those. Uh, hostile drone intrusion alerts uh, are now occurring in northern Israel on the border with... Uh, yeah, northern Israel, sirens are now sounding in northern Israel. Uh, we also have, this is potentially now a counterattack against Israel. Yeah, yep, okay. So, let's take a peek here. We've got, uh, we're gonna, we've got a red alert out now in what looks like northern Israel, possibly as there are some counterattacks coming to Israel at the moment. Let's listen in here. Which is it? in uh, central, western, central Iran. One more thing uh, that the U.S. official told me is that it is not believed to be against uh, a nuclear facility. We've been talking about the city mm -hmm. of Esfahan. It is one of Iran's most important. There is a significant nuclear facility there. My understanding from speaking uh, with now multiple U.S. officials is that uh, the targets that Israel had indicated that they would be going after in a counterstrike would not be nuclear. One senior U.S. official also telling me that the targets would not be civilian. Uh, as we were just saying moments ago, Abby, uh, the U.S. was expecting uh, Israel to carry out a strike that was limited in scope, uh, perhaps against military targets, but something that would be visible so as to tell the world this is Israel uh, hitting back against Iran. Of course, we've seen these images now uh, for over the past hour. This is a very visible strike. And now we have this confirmation that this was indeed Israel uh, that is uh, attacking Iran. So major questions now where we go from here. We have to get a much better sense. Uh, indeed, Israel and, 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 and the U.S. have to have a much better sense uh, of, of what was struck, what the damage was done in order to be able to try to predict how Iran might respond, but we have gotten uh, some, uh, some very serious words from a whole range of Iranian officials over the course of the past few days, the latest of whom was this Iranian foreign minister in New York with our colleague Aaron Burnett tonight, a warning that if Israel were to attack Iran, that they would strike back, they would strike back hard, that they would expand their, their range of targets beyond just military like last weekend to include civilian, uh, financial, uh, and others, and that they could do so immediately. One thing to note from the foreign minister's interview, uh, he said that they would not be going after U.S. targets uh, unless the U.S. were somehow directly involved. Uh, I was told very firmly by a U.S. official not too long ago uh, that the U.S. certainly did not give the green light uh, to this Israeli operation. What we have heard all... Yeah, well, we, we know that. The U.S. probably didn't even know about it, honestly. Iranian uh, space agency, everything that happened was a failed and humiliating attempt for Israeli aviation. This is now uh, a response from uh, Iran. Uh, so uh, clearly... Um, uh, clearly, Iran is trying to discredit uh, Israel's attack here, just like uh, Israel discredited Iran's. Uh, this is uh, quite interesting. Uh, so now the question is, as we've been saying, how will Iran respond? There's some talk about Iran responding with potentially a nuclear uh, or an attack on nuclear uh, facilities in Israel. Uh, so uh, to sort of counterattack this near attack uh, p uh, nearby potentially nuclear facilities within uh, Isfahan. We have one of the largest nuclear research facility in Iran, in Isfahan, one of the areas uh, suspected to be attacked. Again, we're unsure if, uh, if these explosions were uh, intercepted, if these attacks were intercepted uh, or if they actually landed. Let's listen in again. Uh, in this situation like this, is the Fed's 2% target secondary and rate cut important for the economic strength of the U.S.? No, absolutely not. The Federal Reserve will not uh, simply 
uh, cut rates because of an increasing conflict in uh, between Israel and Iran. So no, uh, if anything, this actually uh, increases the chance of no rate cuts as uh, eventually oil does trickle down, higher oil and energy prices do trickle down to core inflation. Uh, and so inflation will, will likely be higher because of these geopolitical issues. So no, it's, it's highly unlikely that uh, this would be a, a reason for uh, rate cuts. I think they're going to respond in kind, but they're going to respond with a, a, a larger attack that in their minds would be more effective than the first one. Uh, that's an ominous warning there. And, and I think that you may be right. We've been discussing. It's not clear that either side knows how this might end. Uh, Director Clapper, continue to stand by for us. Major Mike Lyons is with us as well. Did she say Director Clapper? Your reaction to the fact, according to Alex's sources, that there were non-nuclear targets who that may have been uh, the on the receiving end of Israeli bombs here in the region. Well, they had to be followed up with intel, and they had to be important targets. So what, again, General Mark said, and, and they, and it, it, you know, for why they attacked them, what, what was their reason behind them? Again, it's just too close to that facility in order to think that they wouldn't have to send a signal that they could go and get it. But uh, air defense platforms, there's other air defense platforms they could have attacked along that border. They could have been Republican Guard forces. They could have been other military units that the Israelis thought was high-value targets. Uh, and this was an opportunity to go after them. All right, we're going to switch channels here for a moment just to flip around. Uh, keep in mind, if you need life insurance, we got a paid sponsor on our channel, metkevin.com slash life. You can get life insurance in as little as five minutes by going to metkevin.com slash life or use that link down below, M-E-T-K-E-V, kevin.com slash life. Paid sponsor, it's what Lauren and I use. Uh, Israeli retaliatory strike against Iran. All right. Our thanks to Michael Wilson. I want to bring in Animal Jewelers now who's watching these markets for us, Bell. Yeah, well, first thing I want to point out, we've got the broader index at a session low here, but off more than 2%. Uh, every single sector in the red today, with a lone exception of energy, of course, we're seeing that big spike in Brent crude, WTI, quick check on some of those energy stocks in particular. And you are seeing investors really piling into some of the names in Japan and Korea. Uh, what else we're tracking, of course, is, is the, the drop that we're seeing in, in most parts of the markets and that move back in, guys, to the havens. Yep. Certainly we'll be watching. Yeah, havens would include, for example, bonds. You do have Bitcoin now moving back up to 61,000 on the impression that maybe some of these attacks uh, were intercepted. So that is a large spike uh, on, uh, on Bitcoin right now. Uh, we've got also uh, talk now that Taiwanese stocks down about 4% extending losses. So we're going to write that down. Taiwanese stocks uh, potentially down as much as 4%. And the uh, we've got here the situation. Yeah, it looks like local press TV suggesting no explosions on the ground in Isfahan. Uh, so um, reports from Iranian uh, TV, no explosions on ground in Isfahan. That is a report here, though. There's some uh, information circulating about uh, potentially uh, ambulances responding in Isfahan. Uh, we have no idea. Uh, it, this is all trying to figure out and find out exactly what's going on here. But uh, this could also be cover or propaganda by uh, the uh, Iranian military suggesting, hey, everything's good here. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, that uh, is not a highly unanticipated response, quite frankly. So uh, we'll keep listening to see what's going on, to see as we get updates here. Uh, remember, if you're just now joining, we've got what appear to be a potential Israeli strikes in Baghdad uh, and two cities, Natanz and Isfahan in Iran. Airspace closed. Uh, unclear of the impact or what kind of responses there will be. Iranian state TV now responding that uh, nuclear facilities remain unharmed. Uh, this is important since in Isfahan you do have the nuclear technology center uh, and Iranian state media is claiming uh, all nuclear facilities remain unharmed. Uh, however, they are threatening to strike Israeli nuclear facilities uh, in retaliation. 
Uh, keep in mind, we also have some courses on uh, building your wealth link down below with an expiring coupon code tomorrow evening. That's Friday evening, uh, specifically the uh, buy, sell, trade alerts that we send uh, in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group. All of the courses will be getting some new lectures over the weekend. We've got a beautiful refresh coming in with a lot of your suggestions and input. Let's listen in here. They don't have any idea of who's actually going to govern in Gaza. And I kind of feel like they have a similar problem with Iran. They feel like, okay, we've been attacked. We have to show, don't mess with us, we're going to hit back. But where does it go from here? If Iran hits back, how do they prevent this larger war from breaking out? Which is Robin said, and I think that's right. Neither side really wants that larger war, but both sides are determined to show, you can't push me around, I have to establish my deterrence. Neither side, I, I don't think, has a, has a long-term strategy here. And that's, that's very dangerous because emotions are involved, nationalism is involved and a lot of weaponry is involved. And look, let's be honest, it's particularly dangerous for the state of Israel, which is like an island uh, in the Middle East, and it, there's nowhere to turn if there is a broader conflict. So at what point does this uh, need to turn to a conversation about uh, what's, what is it going to take to move toward peace in Gaza and to de-escalate the tensions? Not Keep in mind, it does indicate that uh, Israel says they uh, indicated they would not uh, target nuclear targets, although apparently they are targeting cities uh, where there are nuclear targets. They have a war against Hezbollah in, in, in Lebanon, and now they're starting a direct war with Iran. That's a lot. I mean, Israel is a very powerful military, but that's a lot of wars at once for one little country. And to it handle. also suggests that perhaps the United States almost might inevitably be dragged into whatever happens there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you saw last week, I mean, U.S. forces were defending Israel. And since October 7th, there have been many Iranian-sponsored attacks on U.S. bases in the region, some of which have killed or wounded U.S. troops. So, yeah, absolutely, the United States is in the middle of it because we're, we're Israel's ally. We're, we're also the ally of, of some of the Arab states involved. So we're trying to keep peace in the region, but it's becoming very hard to do. It's kind of like a referee trying to step between two guys who are flailing it at each other, and you're going to get punched from both sides. In, when it comes to the conflict in Ukraine, the President Biden has been very clear there, there are going to be limits to how involved the United States is. Do you think that there will be any limits when it comes to Israel? That, you know, that remains to be seen. I mean, I think... A large recovery right now on BTC. You can see here uh, moving up to about 61.3 at the moment. Uh, looks like you're trying to recover as reports are coming through potentially of uh, no uh, actual impacts on the ground in Iran, though uh, that is, uh, uh, that, that, you know, strikes were intercepted. Uh, very unclear at the moment still, uh, although no images uh, really of, of current strikes uh, that we can confirm. Thank you very much for sticking with us all of this hour. Uh, what we know at this hour, a U.S. official has now confirmed to CNN that Israel has struck inside of Iran. I'm Abby Phillip. Laura Coates will pick up our special coverage right now. Yeah, let's go ahead and pop on over to a different channel here. Let's go to Fox for a moment. Explosions in southern Iran, about 200 miles uh, south of Tehran, as Trey Yinks tells us, in, in a place called Isfahan. And in this area, there are nuclear facilities. And we do not know if those nuclear facilities were targeted. They just happen to be in the vicinity. And so right now, we are waiting for clarification from the Israeli government. And yeah, and it sounds like the answer to that is no, that the Israeli government did not target the nuclear facilities. We don't know the specifics of what happened, of how many strikes there were. We don't know if these came from the air. We don't know if they came from drones. We don't know where these strikes came from, but we do believe that they came from Israel. Nobody has knocked down any of that reporting as of yet. Uh, we, should, we should point out that Jackie Heinrich is now reporting, and this is quoting a source familiar confirms, an Israeli strike within Iran says the U.S. was not involved and there was uh, pre-notification to the United States from the Israelis, which is important here because if you consider this, the, the U.S. at least was notified. We've got Aaron Cohen with us. We've got Rabbi Haim Men. Uh, we've got uh, we've got several. I don't know about that. Where they're getting that from? That the U.S. was notified. Now we know for the first time, Aaron Cohen, that at least the United States was notified. Because as of late today, Qatar was reporting that the United States and Israel were negotiating Israel going into Rafah, which is in southern Gaza. And if they were going into Rafah, the United States was willing to okay that mission as long as they did not retaliate against Iran. 
So now the United States has been put on notice that this did happen, and the question becomes, mm -hmm. what is the Yeah, there are going to be a lot of questions about uh, energy supply. I, I personally I don't think you're going to see a lot of energy supply disruptions uh, from this un until you start actually getting uh, a larger scale a war. Uh, take a look here at Bitcoin's uh, bounce right here. Bitcoin bouncing nearly uh, nearly perfectly on one of these day trade lines that we have. Uh, we have one right here at uh, 617, uh, solid rejection there. Uh, Jack, you wanna come say hi? This is Jack, it's my little guy. Uh, right now there are reports that uh, Israel uh, sent some likely uh, fighter jets over to Baghdad, Iraq, and uh, bombed a, a meeting that was going on there and uh, struck uh, uh, potentially a couple locations in, in Iran, like, like airports. I'll show you uh, a picture of one that uh, it, we've been looking at. It's in this city called Isfahan, uh, and there are a couple airports over there. And we'll put this up on screen as well. Uh, it's not sh it's not clear if these airports were actually hit because Iran could have shot down the missiles. Uh, but if you take a look at this, you could just zoom in here on Google Maps and and can you tell what you see right there? What does that look like to you? Yeah, come a little closer. What does that look like? Like those things? Yeah, these little things right here. What do those look like? They look like piles of sticks <laughs> piles of sticks okay let's uh let's see if we can show you some uh maybe pictures of what those could look like oh, I yeah they look tiny from a satellite don't they yeah so you've got uh here's an air base that has these are a lot of helicopters huh i mean you've got maybe 10 maybe this could be about 100 helicopters here huh and so there are some reports that maybe israel attacked either these helicopters here or potentially at this airport right here, sometimes ca countries put at the end of airports these little hangars. You know what hangars are? Yeah, it's where you put the planes. Exactly. Uh, it's potentially that in these hangars, maybe you had some military planes, uh, like F-14s. You know what an F-14 is? Isn't it like an old fighter jet? An old fighter jet. Good job. It is an older fighter jet. These are uh, 1970s uh, fighter jets. So it's an older style of fighter jet. America hasn't used these fighter jets uh, since uh, 2006. And uh, they're nicknamed the Tomcat. So uh, I, and why they're called the Tomcat, I don't know. You'd have to ask Grunman, the company that manufactures them uh, or used to manufacture them. But now Iran uses them. Uh, so F-14s could have been there. They could have attacked the helicopters that you saw. Uh, and then, of course, there are reports that they attacked these, uh, uh, these, uh, this meeting that occurred. Uh, and then what do you think happened to, uh, to Bitcoin during that, that time? We can see that here uh, of uh, the time this attack was announced uh, to, to where we sit now. Can you see what happened? It went down, but now it's going to cup. It, it went down, and now it's kind of making a little cup there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That is what it looks like. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is the... Uh, international community that's that's nervous about you know what what does this mean does this mean the United States is going to go to war with Iran or is Israel going to go to a war with Iran these are uh, these are a lot of concerns and so when people get nervous about their money uh, they like to do two things uh, actually they like to do a few things one of the things they like to do is people like to sell stocks so this is what's happening to the stock market uh, right now for tomorrow. This is the guess as to what's going to happen. Can you see what color these three are right here? So those ones are going down. That one's going down a lot. That's going down, yep, 1% right here, 1.2%, 1.5%, correct? And then that one's going up. Now that one's going up. And do you know what that word is right there? Oil, exactly. So oil's going up about 4%. Uh, people are nervous that there could be disruptions. Uh, this is also one that's turning green. Can you read that word right there? Gold, silver, copper, black. Yep, the precious metals are going up. So uh, one of the things you could see is precious metals will go up, stocks go down, oil goes up. And then there's this thing called a bond, which is like a loan. Uh, and you can get steady payments on that. Uh, the yields are going down, but actually the prices are going up of those bonds. So that's a little tricky. But uh, yeah, obviously there's a situation going on and it's creating some nervousness. And so uh, international communities watching this very closely, but nobody likes war, right? Do you want to say goodbye to everyone and we'll go back to some other updates?
<laughs> Thanks for coming. Have a good night, okay? Love you, dude. Bye. All right, that's Jack. So let's listen in here. Esfahan province, where we've been reporting all night about these explosions taking place. The Iranians claim that air defense systems were active over mm. the province and that they were successful. Again, this is Iranian state media, so we can't independently confirm the success of the air defense, but that they were successful in shooting down any sort of projectiles that were over Iranian airspace. Again, mm -hmm. Iran's main airport in Tehran remains closed at this hour to civilian flights. The Israelis have not yet commented on the situation, but we do know... Uh, I'm just now hearing that Israel is confirming uh, that their air force implemented a limited raid on Isfahan. Yeah. The question here is what exactly was targeted in this response, likely by the Israelis. Again, Israel wants to send a message to Iran that they have the ability to target their nuclear facilities if needed. Trace. Yeah, and it's interesting, Trey, because uh, we are showing brand new video. These are explosions apparently over Isfahan. This is brand new video just in to Fox News Channel on the right hand side of your screen. In fact, we can. We literally played that footage over an hour ago, like an hour and a half ago. We played that footage. You can just scroll back in this live stream and see the little flashes in the sky. <laughs> so I love how they're like, this is just in. Right now is that nuclear sites in Iran's province of Isfahan remain unharmed. Iran's state television said on Friday as air defense systems were activated in the city of Isfahan against suspected drones, which, as you were saying moments ago, Trey, is going to be turned from Iran as a victory as, hey, they knocked down our drones coming in. We just knocked down theirs. And, you know, and there was no damage to our nuclear systems. Sites. So as we watch these explosions happening in southern Iran, it appears that, you know, you can... Looks like, by the way, 24-hour trading on Robinhood appears to be shut down, likely due to volatility. So 24-hour trading on Robinhood appears to be shut down. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a summary in just a moment here to catch everybody up uh, with what's going on. Let's listen in for just another moment. We are enriching uranium closer and closer to weapons-grade material. Just last year, the IAEA, the UN's nuclear watchdog, was able to confirm that there were enriched particles close to 90%. That is weapons-grade material, not yet reaching 90%. Mm -hmm. Also, you have watchdogs indicating that the breakout period for Iran is down to just a matter of days to create a nuclear weapon. What is significant is last weekend you had the Iranians firing ballistic missiles at Israel, the same Shahab missiles that would be used to launch a nuclear warhead. And that certainly drew concern from the Israelis, something that they expressed in background briefings over the past week. But remember, the Israelis are also patient. The Iranians have described mm -hmm. themselves as operating through strategic patience, but the Israelis have been going after Iran's nuclear program for years. Back in 2020, they killed in a covert operation Iran's top nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fahrasadi. And Fahrasadi was a man who was conducting research to get Iran closer to a nuclear weapon. So Israel may have conducted this attack overnight to send a message to Iran that any sort of attack on Israeli territory, like we saw last weekend with drones and missiles, would not go unanswered, and that they have the capability to target Iranian nuclear facilities if they so desire. Again, at this moment, Israeli forces do have to remain on high alert, but it appears, at least according to Iranian state media, that there is an exit ramp here for the Iranians to say that this mm. counterattack was not so successful and maybe give the region a possibility to de-escalate as... Yeah, it's an interesting point of view that maybe you could say, hey, Iran was able to defend itself, right? Uh, it's an interesting point of view. So uh, let's go ahead and do a summary here of what's going on. Tonight, Israel has struck back against Iran for Iran's retaliation against Israel for striking the Iranian consulate, or a portion of it, in the capital of Syria, Damascus. Now, one of the issues we have is 
What is the consequence of all of this going to be? Today is uh, Khamenei, uh, I'm going to mess up his name. It is the supreme leader of Iran's uh, birthday. Uh, you have his birthday on the 19th, and this is just three days before Passover. Israel originally suggested they would not strike back against Iran until after Passover, uh, though even though they gave a pre-heads up to the U.S., they did, mostly in secret, just surprise attack Iran. Uh, Iran's uh, Supreme Council is holding an emergency meeting. What we're hearing from Iran is that uh, on-the-ground sites in Iran were not damaged. It's unclear if this was a messaging ploy from Israel or if Iran was able to uh, eliminate uh, Israeli strikes. We do have uh, arguments that uh, coming from Iran that uh, Iran would potentially uh, respond with a weapon they have never used before. Uh, that could be, uh, as some have said, uh, potentially a dirty bomb, which might be some form of a bomb that uh, contains nuclear particles. That's unlikely, though, since it would likely very much upset the uh, coalition in the Middle East, uh, as well as Russia and China, who are allies of Iran. Uh, Iran, though, has promised a more significant response if Israel responds. Israel has now responded, and so Israel is uh, coming back uh, suggesting they will target Israeli nuclear strikes with a counterattack. One of the reasons there's talk about uh, potentially striking uh, Israel uh, and uh, Israel's nuclear facilities with a counterattack is because Israel attempted to strike, or maybe did, it's unclear based on how much we can trust uh, the uh, Iranian media at this point. Uh, it does appear that uh, Israel attempted to strike Isfahan. And now this is very important. This is about 300 kilometers south of Tehran, the capital of Iran. Uh, and why this is so important is that we've got a few critical elements here at Isfahan. Uh, number one, in the center of Isfahan, uh, we have uh, a, the University uh, of uh, Isfahan. And if we uh, navigate between the International Airport and the Isfahan University of Technology, uh, we could see uh, one location up here in the northwest one of these locations, uh, either the northwest location or the location in the actual city, because there is another location in the city, uh, either of these locations are part of the University of Isfahan, and uh, they are believed to be part of Iran's uh, nuclear research facility. Uh, so it's possible that uh, Israel's attempted strike against Iran here was a messaging tool to suggest, hey, if, if you think you're safe, we can strike you when you least expect it, and we know where your nuclear facilities are. Uh, over here at the uh, Isfahan International Airport, we believe there are uh, F-14 Tomcats uh, based here. Marco Rubio suggested that in the Northeast there is an airbase with F-14 Tomcats. These are 1970s technology. It's possible they could be here in basic hangars. Here's, for example, a hangar labeled Army Jet Hangar. Gosh, doesn't take much of the CIA to decide, okay, where, where to strike. Of course, who knows? Maybe that's just clickbait. But it is not uncommon for hangars to be near the end of a uh, runway uh, that are used for military purposes to have uh, quick access to those runways. Uh, another potential target, uh, though, again, unclear given that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like uh, there's very clear evidence that we do have strikes on the ground. Uh, in uh, in Isfahan. Another potential target could have been a military airbase uh, here. As you can see, multiple uh, transport helicopters here. Uh, we do also have another airbase right here uh, with multiple helicopters. In fact, if we uh, ping this particular location, uh, we will be able to see... Uh, there we go. We'll see some imagery of the airbase in the southern portion of Isfahan showing you the sort of damaged tarmac here, but uh, helicopter landing uh, site. Uh, so this is one area that was potentially attacked. 
as well as Natanz, a province outside of Isfahan, may have also uh, potentially been a target of attacks, uh, both of these south of Tehran. Uh, in addition, we do have a notice to airmen that uh, any air travel between Isfahan and Baghdad would be halted, uh, potentially because, uh, as Marco Rubio pointed out, uh, it is possible that uh, Israel struck Iran uh, from airstrikes originating from Baghdad, that is, Israel may have flown over Baghdad, struck Baghdad, specifically where a meeting was uh, allegedly taking place between Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard individuals and Iranian proxies, and potentially at the same time launched missiles from here. It would only take about 15 minutes for a directed missile from, say, an F-35 or otherwise to go from a manned aircraft here. Uh, to targets within Iran. Uh, missiles could also circulate in the air for a period of time uh, until being coordinated to strike at the same time uh, or uh, uh, until they uh, verify the targets that they're looking for uh, and then they strike comparing satellite imagery to what uh, vision-based systems the missiles have on board. Uh, Iranian stray, uh, uh, state media is suggesting that there was a drone attack uh, carried out by Israeli groups, uh, and that uh, that uh, Iran uh, Iran was able to defend against these. Uh, it's unclear if these strikes uh, struck the ground or, or not at this point, uh, as there's a, a, a lack of trust from really, quite frankly, any media outlet at this point. Uh, there are still drones being struck uh, in the area or being observed in the area over Isfahan. Uh, there are um, Iranian media claims that air defense systems have become active and destroyed these, quote, drones in the sky. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, we've had some dramatic movements in markets here. Pre-market, we're down uh, plus or minus 1% in U.S. stocks. The Nikkei uh, is down about 3.3% in Japan. You've got bond yields down about 10 basis points as there is a bit of a flight to safety in bonds. Uh, oil up about 3% to about $90 per barrel on the international blend. Gold up over 2400 Bitcoin briefly dropped below 60000 down to the upper 5900 range, with Ethereum down to a low of about 2880 However, since recovering, Bitcoin now up to about 61.6. Big questions now are going to be how is Iran going to respond? Some red alerts being claimed in Israel, uh, in northern parts of Israel, potential uh, potentially due to hostile drone intrusions uh, being launched by uh, Lebanon into Israel. Remember, you also have multiple Iranian-backed forces in the area uh, around Israel that uh, really create a lot of competitors for Israel to fight with. And we're going to go through some of those. I quickly want to just remind you, we have an expiring coupon code on those programs on building your wealth and the buy-sell alerts for trading in the Stocks and Psychology Money Group, all those at meetkevin.com. That does expire tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. If you want to bundle those up, email us at staff at meetkevin.com. So what kind of backed force, uh, Ira Iranian-backed forces do we have? Well, we have Hezbollah. Hezbollah originates from the north in Lebanon. We've got Hamas, uh, which, uh, as we saw, is, is Palestinian-based. There are other Palestinian jihad movements or West Bank militants as well. Uh, then we have the Houthis in Yemen. We have Assyria, which which is your only ally for Iran in the region, though Iran does ally with Russia uh, and uh, with China. China buys Iranian oil cheaper than it could buy oil on the free market. Uh, and of course, uh, Iran supplies Russia with uh, drones like the uh, Shahid 131s or the 136s. They manufacture those for between $40,000 to $50,000 a piece. They're piston-propelled uh, drones uh, that can carry a warhead. Uh, they're typically deemed to be suicide drones. Uh, kamikaze drones is another way to put that. And uh, some individuals believe that Russia pays about $200,000 per uh, Shahid-131. Uh, and this is why uh, Russia wants to manufacture these locally in Russia in coordination with uh, Iran. The big question now, though, is what kind of strike back are we going to get from Iran? Iran has suggested they would respond with a weapon they've never used before, promising us more significant response uh, and suggesting they might target uh, Israeli nuclear sites with a response. There was apparently pre-notification to the United States 
Uh, there uh, are, uh, again, multiple reports that no uh, strikes on the ground in Iran have actually succeeded, that instead only uh, strikes have landed in uh, Baghdad. Uh, we are uh, still listening very closely to see what other kind of information we can get, uh, though uh, it's possible that, uh, or it's likely rather, that the target for Israel was not a nuclear target, though that was initially rumored. Uh, we do also have the initial uh, rumor that uh, uh, Israel would try to not target anything that would uh, affect uh, human lives, that this would be a limited response. Uh, of course, uh, this is clearly an escalation, uh, and now the question is going to be, what is Iran going to s respond with? Remember the disproportionate responses of force that we have seen. Hamas uh, and the Hamas attack on October 7th of last year led to the death of about uh, just over a thousand individuals. However, the subsequent Israeli retaliation led to the death of over 30,000 men, women, children, fighters, you name it, in Gaza, and obviously the massive humanitarian crisis we now have in Gaza. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, Israel strike on uh, the Damascus consulate, which would be deemed a uh, Iranian uh, set of soil. A consulate or a portion of a consulate would be deemed Iranian soil, uh, which, of course, Iran responded with a drone and uh, ballistic missile attack, counterattack to Israel, 99.9% .9 of which were shot down by the combined forces of the Royal Air Force, the British Royal Air Force, the United States Air Force, uh, and, of course, the uh, Israeli uh, defense systems. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Israeli's response was likely uh, expected to cost somewhere between one to $1.2 billion, uh, a lot of that likely funded by the United States. We did just have the Navy argue that they just ran through $1 billion worth of munitions. Uh, you do have uh, uh, missile defense systems that can cost anywhere between uh, $400,000 to $2 million per rocket uh, to respond. Uh, you have Sidewinder missiles that appear to be used or have been used uh, in uh, taking down some of these kamikaze drones. Each Sidewinder can typically run about... Uh, uh, well, typically um, $2 million or so. So very, very uh, expensive uh, to see uh, uh, these, these counterattacks. And this escalation is clearly uh, being borne by, uh, well, the cost is being borne by either Israeli taxpayers, U.S. taxpayers, or a combination of them all. But it's also going to be paid globally in the form of likely higher energy price inflation as we are seeing oil prices rise. There's some questions about whether or not this would lead the Federal Reserve to potentially cut rates sooner. Uh, no, if anything, it would actually be the opposite. The Federal Reserve responds to inflation, not geopolitical concerns, and anything that is likely to escalate inflation, unfortunately, is likely to escalate uh, uh, the, the need for higher rates uh, for longer. Just earlier today, we had Bostick and Williams from the Federal Reserve suggest that uh, we might not even see any rates this year, rate cuts this year, and that rates might stay at the level they are now 5.375 for the rest of the year. Uh, we'll stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to get uh, more updates. If you have not yet, make sure to get life insurance in as little as five minutes by going to metkevin.com slash life. It's a paid promotion. Uh, it's the same life insurance Lauren and I use, and you can Apple Pay and Android Pay for it. Metkevin.com slash life, M-E-T-K-E-V-I-N.com slash life. Another thing you could do is you could type in metkevin.com slash roadshow. We are about to do a, a roadshow for house hack where you can meet me in person. Uh, in various different areas, likely uh, will be in New York, Florida, Texas, uh, Vegas, California, different locations throughout the country. So make sure you uh, register which city you're most interested in learning about my real estate startup house hack. Uh, that's metkevin.com slash roadshow. Uh, and then, of course, remember, we have an expiring coupon code on those programs on Building Your Wealth uh, tomorrow, 11.59 p.m. If you need a bundle coupon, you have questions about bundling up between courses, upgrading, you want to come to the event we're doing this summer in June, uh, make sure to uh, check out uh, the um, or just email us at staff at meetkevin.com. We can help you out. 
Uh, there are also now claims about an earlier meeting of the uh, uh, emergency meeting of the Supreme National Council potentially being false. So as usual, when you hear information here uh, or anywhere and it is breaking news, uh, make sure to remember that we want to take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, so it is now possible possible that this news uh, was false on the Iranian Supreme Council. Obviously, when news is breaking, uh, y you never know. You've got Reuters that can print false information, the Associated Press, Bloomberg, you name it. So take everything with a grain of salt, especially pictures and videos that you see. Uh, but clearly, we are now on standby for an Iranian response and I'm nervous about what that could entail. So uh, thank you for watching the breaking news with me. I appreciate all over 45,000 of you that were here. Uh, make sure to subscribe, whether you're the 28,000 on X, make sure to hit follow. Uh, I like to bring live breaking news here. Or if you're watching on YouTube or you would prefer to watch on YouTube, uh, look me up on YouTube, Meet Kevin on YouTube, and you can subscribe there. To the 54 of you on Twitch, where is everybody on Twitch? Anyway, thanks StreamYard for helping me stream to multiple different destinations. They're a partner of the channel as well. Metkevin.com slash StreamYard to learn more about them so I can multi-stream. Bitcoin now over 62,000 as we are getting a rebound. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Appreciate you all and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Good luck. Stay safe.